All right, ladies and gentlemen, what's up? And welcome back to another FFT AI battle. So on top, we have uh, one of Hearable's teams that he submitted from last week. And then on bottom, uh, once again, we have Mure. I figured that um, it'd be a little bit easier to have Mure go up against a few opponents. That way we can uh, showcase the differences with her uh, changes to the Lancer and the Priest. And I'll uh, remind you of those if you haven't seen yesterday's video. But let's introduce the... Units first for uh, units first for each of these teams. So for Hero Ball, we have the Hound, the Monk, Hangry, the Geomancer. He gonna eat all the priests, the Affin Chickens, the Ninja. Yep. So once again, the Hound, Hangry, he gonna eat all the Affin Chickens. So, yep. Now as for Mira and her team, we have Orchid, the Red Dragon, Amaryllis, the Oracle, Aspen, the Lancer. And Daisy the Priest. So, just as a friendly reminder, uh, the changes made by this Lancer and Priest is that this Lancer now has damage split and attack up, whereas beforehand he had counter and concentrate. She wanted to uh, pump out a little bit more damage. Um, her Lancer also has basic skill and specifically accumulate and accumulate alone. So, if she's out of range or if this Lancer can't jump on anybody, he can use accumulate to boost the damage, uh, damage of both his melee attacks and his jumps. And then this uh, priest was giving cure to and Asuna. So, yeah, she's a little bit more of a utility bot. Um, let's just uh, jump right into the action then. So the map we're going to go to is number 15 at the gate of Limberry Castle number 1. Uh, hopefully this isn't another glitch map. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> let's see. Oh, no, not bad. There's uh, obviously a lot of terrain. So unless these units have, like, move, teleport, ignore height, um, they're going to have to scour the mountain or scour this top to get to each other so yep um surprisingly earth slash is able to hit from that far away and that's what i was talking about with teleport is that it doesn't discriminate whatsoever um it's gonna be a little bit useful for it looks like both the priest and uh there's that akimi i was talking about the priest and the geomancer on um here balls end they both have float so they don't have to worry about uh, water panels. Unfortunately, this dragon will have to worry about them. So only one for four on a uh, speed rocks. 145. That's a little less than half of his life bar. So it's nothing too concerning. That monk can easily just heal up a chunk of that HP. Ninja is in depth two water. A common thing that people don't know about is that when you're in depth two, oh, I thought you lost all evasion, but you can't attack if you're in the depth of two or below with that unit. So, um, unfortunately, yeah, he can't cross into the water. Uh, this monster can't, but he was able to attack him with a ranged uh, attack from a distance. So, um, looks like that monk is just a little too far away from his team and he's gonna get executed. Old fashioned Zensukuken. However, there is some return fire, but it is for a small amount, only, you know, 80 damage or so. Because remember, that Oracle has a uh, magic defend up, so she will cut the damage down a uh, considerable amount. Move HP up on the ninja. Um, I believe it was the ninja who lost his point of speed, so he'll get less turns in. And overall, less effects from, uh, he'll benefit less from move HP up, but... Um, Right now, this is looking like it's going to go to uh, Mire. That monk is uh, very is very far away from his team, and that is very peculiar. That ninja only has 20 faith now, so any spells that are going to going to be affected towards him are going to do very little damage. Although, um, because it's considered a magical ability independent of faith, that red dragon will still do a good amount with his red bracelet. So right now it's looking like as if here balls gonna be struggling with this one, um, and with a very low faith value, it's gonna be difficult for him to survive. Her MP is gone, so she is dead now. Um, Ninja should be dead very shortly. Uh, only one kill, and then damage split for considerable amount, 66 on a low HP unit, and she's dead now. And there's attack up coming into play. In addition to the accumulate, what I was talking about from beforehand, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I think uh, the monk, monk uh, having teleport and moving too far forward is kind of what caused it to turn into a three on four effectively. But uh, yeah, let's go to our next map and see how much of an impact that makes. 
And welcome back, Tutorial 2, yeah. Um, it's a little bit too bad that the, these units are not like in opposite corners. Again, we'd be able to see the better relationship with uh, large versus uh, small maps. That diversification, rather. But um, at least they're not attacking and outright charging towards each other immediately within first turn. Um, the Geomancer was out of range because she didn't move afterwards. Um, good jump, there's a good chance it's going to go up, but Blade Grass, there's an opportunity for it to be dodged. And those are very low damaging shots. Remember that Ninja has defense up, he doesn't have attack up, so his damage is not going to be all that high. And then he also has the daggers too. Two out of the four speed saves do hit. Any deaths? No, MP switched ate one hit. And ate 190 HP, so that... Uh, if that if that uh, MP switch didn't hit, that uh, Geomancer would be a critical. Good amount, 75. Keep keep in mind, uh, Earth Slash is not um, Blade Grasp is not accounted for by Earth Slash. Earth Slash bypasses uh, Blade Grasp. It's only mostly melee attacks themselves, with the exception of jump and maybe gunshots, but that's about it. All right, unfortunately she was put down. As for the ninja. Ooh, damage split. That's really nice right there. But we are down to a three on three. This, uh, remember this, uh, Oracle, since she has dance, she doesn't have any revival. So she's not gonna have an, she's gonna have a bit of a difficult time. And I just thought about it. With the Lancer having, uh, base, uh, with him having only accumulate, there's no more revival left on Mirei's end. The only person with revival is the, is the priest. So it's pretty much up to the... it's a permanent 3 on 4. Um, I don't know if these speed points will make a difference, but they most certainly could. Um, he should be dead. Yep. Nope, 18% dodge. Came in key and same with that blade grass. That's two units that could be dead right now. Unfortunately, did not uh, pan out for Mirei. A little bit of bad luck. Although, she got four points of speed... Uh, four points of speed were deducted there. Uh, no petrify, so even results overall. He'll be in critical, and he guards again with uh, low evasion. Lancer's still alive, and he's still hanging in tight. Um, that that Oracle really has to get into the fray and start, you know, two-shotting people with two hands. Because I think that's kind of what's uh, causing it. Let's see. Alright, Ninja does go down this time. But uh, keep in mind, there's no healing left on Mirei's end. They can all do damage, and another 65%. Uh, misses. Alright, so they're 3 for 6 on the slow dances. I don't remember if that someone's going to kill him off. It should now. Yeah. I'm not sure if uh, 30 HP heal from damage split's going to uh, help him stay alive. Let's see. He should be jumping out of it smartly. Yep. And this time it does uh, connect. The 65% play grass did not come into play this time. Um... I'm hoping that Oracle kind of gets in there and just starts uh, whack, you know, pelting people with uh, sta her staff. Uh, the, I don't know what's going on. That that Oracle made a really bad decision. Maybe she th is thinking, hey, the Lancer's going to kill off the priest for me. But what if the spell resolves and the ninjas revive? That Oracle is not really doing anything. Luckily, the, the rays missed, so it all worked out in the end. But it's still kind of a... To me, if I were a player, that is a dumb move. Now she's going in. Low evasion. Um, this should... Alright, that's got to be compatibility. 99. It's got to be bad compat. Um, but she's got... Her MP switch doesn't apply. Is there a petrify? No, but... It's up to a Lancer, and he's trying to solo everybody. Um, that Red Dragon, because he's in critical. He's running away from the fight. And two times in a row, that is missed. Wow. A bunch of, like, 30% are consecutively going off. Um... I'm thinking about it now, but there's a chance this Lancer might get a double turn because of, uh, he might get a double turn. Um, I don't know. The reason why I say this is because of all the speed points that have been lost. And she's not dead. It's a little bit too bad. He's able to pick up Crystal and keep himself alive. Uh, she'll still die the next turn, that Geomancer. Uh, that's, that's smart of the Red Dragon to be able to, you know, chip away at about almost half of the Monk's Light Bar. And it looks like that's a Shiba, or something along those lines. Assuming this connects, she dies, yep. 
This is pretty interesting. I wonder if those uh, speed points, the deduction is going to make an impact. And with that Lancer grabbing the crystal, he's just going to be able to eat them up. Or we'll probably go for killing blows. Yeah, it is up to a half HP monk. And I believe all these units have been slowed. So this Lancer might be able to get a double turn and solo the entire team. There's a double turn I was talking about. HP restore? I don't know. It just depends on how the CTs turn out, whether they're synchronized or not. And whether the la whether um, she can survive this priest. Like if she is able to survive with a blade grasp right here. Yep. It's gonna keep the momentum going. This is this is very peculiar. It's it's not often that you see a Lancer being able to basically 3v1. Um, remember he's got damage split and he's closer to the crystals than any of those other units. So whatever damage he takes, unless a petrify goes off, that would have been an unfortunate way for this to go to a round three. Just because of a proc. I wonder if he'll move back a panel? No, he's going for a killing blow. Luckily he does get it, but I don't know, this is this is interesting. Because the Lancer is not closer to the crystals. He's further away that Geomancer will be to get it and no damage splits have gone off, unfortunately, on this Lancer at all. Um, see, he's not able to get it. And yep. So again, it's just the RNG gods have blessed uh, Hearball this round. But I really thought um, Mireille would have had it, but unfortunately, um, some of those Blade Grasps uh, came in clutch, but um, we'll see if Hearball's luck, assuming the match plays out like this on our medium sized map, we'll see if his luck is able to, uh, going to be able to continue running. But yeah, let's go to our tiebreaker and see who prevails. Here we go. Yeah, it's pretty fitting too, the, this map. Uh, Bervenio Volcano with a, a fire themed team, a red dragon, and all this stuff. It's a. Uh, it's home to this uh, team in red. They're ready to shed some blood. I'm hoping we can see some. All right, 75. So that's uh, you know, that's about a about a fifth of his life, or a little bit more than that. No confusion. So he's lost a, like about well, 40% of his life. They're unloading all that damage onto him. Um, I'm not sure if the spell's going to resolve or the jump will. But either way, I think she'll still die. This um, this priest. Yeah, he's almost dead, and I, I'm not sure if he's going to get a turn in. Interesting that uh, they're using low, lower faith. It must be because of the damage that's being applied uh, from the priest onto this Geomancer. So three out of four. 140 damage still, even with a 20 faith loss. It's pretty interesting. A uh, crit shot two and no damage split. And uh, Bladegrass, so that luck is just coming into play. It is a 3-on-3 three three at the moment. Um, fortunately, the Red Dragon is in range of the Priest to be revived. Um, and it doesn't appear to be that way for the Geomancer. Uh, hey there, Aelis. Uh, good to see you. Came right on the tail end of this match. But, um, yeah, uh, this is pretty interesting to say the least. We're on a tiebreaker round. Um, I don't know if we've met before, but if not, uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> so, yeah, we got a little bit of an audience here. Um, this is interesting because it is a three on three, right? Actually, no, three on two, but 20 Brave, that's going to make an impact for the damage threat right there. Because now that Lancer only has a 50 50 shot of being able to connect that spell. Is she dead? No, she's still alive, and she's not critical either, that priest. However, it is a 2 on 3 and with the numbers advantage, there's a good chance that they'll, that they'll prevail here. And with 100% accuracy, another uh, Thunder Bracelet from this uh, Red Dragon, and that Monk's going to go down, unless he heals or something. And he gets a double turn. Those uh, speed points being lost, I mean, that again, that makes all the impact right there. He got a double turn. And uh, just like that, even with all that evasion... Um, Looks like luck turned to uh, towards uh, Mireille's sign. So, congr uh, congratulations, Mireille. You have prevailed. I'm here, Ball. Uh, as always, uh, nice teams that you're making. And uh, we get to see entertaining matches like this. Yeah. Um, so, this would be uploaded today, Friday, January 25th. I'm recording this the, day, uh, the night before. Um, but, yeah, I'll be getting this up uh, very shortly later tomorrow. Um, I'll see you guys for uh, Saturday's video then. Uh, take care until then.